Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV, and in this video, I cover everything we know to date about Nissan's new LEAF E+. Plus. So as you probably already read, CES was last week, and Nissan showed off their new and improved Nissan LEAF called the E+. Plus. Nissan has been producing the LEAF since 2010, which is actually a whole two years ahead of the Model S. Nissan says the E Plus is scheduled to arrive at dealerships in Japan in January of 2019. US sales are expected to begin in spring of 2019 and European sales to commence in mid 2019. But before we get into the specs of the upcoming E Plus, let's provide some context for what the current LEAF offers. Their current battery size is 40 kilowatt hours and offers a range of 150 miles or 241 kilometers. The horsepower is a whopping 147. Torque, 236 pound feet of torque. The zero to 60 or zero to 100 kilometers per hour is a blistering seven and a half seconds. Charging offers 120 volt on the lower end leafs and on the higher end offering 240 volt and DC charging. Pricing ranges from about 30,000 US dollars to 36,200 dollars. And if you charge on 110 volt level one charging, the charging time from zero to full is like forever. In fact, it takes so long that Nissan doesn't even say how long it takes on their website. Uh, it's the same thing with, with Tesla as well. Level two charging on a 240 volt outlet takes about seven and a half hours, which is actually comparable to uh, what it would take me to charge my 75 kilowatt hour Model S. And DC fast charging will do about 80% in 40 minutes. That's what they say on the website. They don't say what a full charge is, but likely another 40 minutes for the remaining 20%. And as many of you know, it has passive cooling for the battery pack. Now let's get into what we know so far about the Nissan LEAF E+. The battery size is a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is a nice jump up. Range, 226 miles or 364 kilometers. The motor is a 160 kilowatt motor. Horsepower, though they don't say specifically, they do give some hints and uh, based on the math, I think it'll be around 213. Torque is 250 pound feet, zero to 60, though they don't say this either. You can sort of guesstimate that it's going to be about 6.3 seconds. So though not incredibly quick, it is an improvement on the current generation they are selling at the dealerships. And uh, charging is going to be the same. And after reaching out to Nissan, they did share with me that the E plus variants that they will offer will be in addition to their current LEAF offerings. So it's safe to say that the E plus will likely start above 36,000 before any incentives or adding any of the bells and whistles. And to many people's surprise, this new E plus still has a passive cooling system on the battery pack. I reached out to Nissan about this specific thing, and here's what they said. The battery will have passive cooling as this meets the needs of our customers, as battery technology has evolved since the launch of the first LEAF. Nissan has worked to add additional safeguards to help mitigate battery degradation. When I asked them about any changes in their battery supplier, thinking they had made some improvements on that end, the spokesperson said there was no change to the supplier and Nissan will continue to use AECS. Here's my take on the E+. I'm extremely optimistic about, number one, the battery improvement size-wise. I think that the upgrade to a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack is going to put this more in line with what we see today with competition in that price point. As well, the increase in range, I think, is a major bonus. This now pushes the Nissan LEAF into a 200 plus mile EV. This, I think, is fantastic for people who want to buy this but do quite a bit of driving. My only concern here with this E Plus is the continued approach to cooling the battery pack. It's passive, meaning that it's not active like what you might see in a Chevy Bolt or a Tesla Model S or X or 3. 
That active cooling distributes battery coolant through the battery pack and helps moderate the temperature. So if you don't have that in the E+, Plus, it's going to impact that battery degradation. The life of the battery is not going to be as long as some of its competitors. It's also going to impact performance. So you're not going to be able to drive at high speeds for long periods of time because that's going to heat up the battery. I also see this being a potential problem if you drive a Nissan Leaf in the mountains and, and you're going uphill, needing a lot of power to power that vehicle over hills. And lastly, I think this is going to impact the direct current charging. It's not going to be able to take that DC fast charging for long periods of time. What I think we may see is it will take DC fast charging, but it will very quickly taper off to a much slower speed. I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether the Nissan Leaf E Plus is something that appeals to you now that it has more than 200 miles of range. Sound off in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you are regular, hit that like button, and I'll see everyone on the next video.